let's look at the matrix representation of the Hamiltonian operator for the quantum harmonic oscillator. In previous videos in the quantum mechanics playlist, I've derived some very important relationships. So one relationship I'm going to write down first is the Hamiltonian operator written in terms of the number operator. So H, capital H with a hat, that is the Hamiltonian operator, and N, capital N with a hat, that is the number operator. And this form over here, this is the Hamiltonian operator written in terms of the number operator. Now, let's have a look at the energy eigenvalues. This is something I derived in the previous video. So the energy eigenvalues, they look like this. E sub n, the nth energy eigenvalue, is equal to h bar omega times little n plus 1 half. And little n is the eigenvalue of the number operator. And the eigenvalues of the number operator, they are the non-negative integers. So n can be equal to 0, and it can be equal to 1, 2, 3, and so on. So these are the eigenvalues, and this is the energy operator. So this is the operator associated with energy in quantum mechanics, and it is called the Hamiltonian operator. So we are pretty familiar with these two relationships. If you're not familiar with these relationships, have a look at the previous videos in the quantum mechanics playlist. One more relationship I want to write down is the time-independent Schrodinger equation. So when the Hamiltonian operator acts on one of its eigenstates, labeled by little n, that is the same as one of the eigenvalues multiplying the eigenstates. So this is essentially the eigenvalue equation for the Hamiltonian operator. And I'm using Dirac notation over here. Here we have a ket, and we also have a ket on this side. And this ket is labeled by little n. And little n, that is the same n that we have over here. It is one of the eigenvalues of the number operator. And it can, it can go through all of the non-negative integers. So that includes 0 and all of the positive integers. But it cannot be a negative integer. And it, it is not uh, allowed to be a non-integer. So it can't be anything in between the integers. So this is not necessarily any of the real numbers. So this over here, this is a real number. So this is an integer, and this over here, this is a real number. How do we know that this guy is a real number? It is a real number because it is an eigenvalue of a Hermitian operator. The Hamiltonian operator is Hermitian. If we were to take the Hermitian conjugate of this operator, it would be equal to itself. So that is the definition of a Hermitian operator. And we've seen these relationships in previous videos. And in this video, what I want to do is I want to draw the matrix representation of the Hamiltonian for the quantum harmonic oscillator. But first, we need to know what the entries in that matrix are going to be. What are the elements of that matrix? And to find out, we're going to take a sandwich of this Hamiltonian operator. We're going to sandwich it between two uh, different, or they could actually be the same, two, val uh, two of these eigenstates. I'm going to label one of the eigenstates by m and the other one by n. So that is just standard notation. Sometimes you might see i and j, or you could also see n and n prime. Those are all standard notation for different eigenstates. That's just a different way of labeling uh, these labels inside the cat. So I'll do that underneath. So what we're going to have is m over here inside a bra. Then we're going to have a Hamiltonian. And then we're going to have this cat over here. So what is this telling us? We have a Dirac notation sandwich. Here is a cat. Here is a bra. And inside, we have an operator. So this operator can be considered as acting on the ket. And we can also consider this operator as acting on the bra. But then we would have to take the Hermitian conjugate. But luckily for us, this is a Hermitian operator. So uh, it's actually equal to its Hermitian conjugate. So we can also act on the left, and we can act on the right. For this derivation, I'm just going to act on the right, because that's a little simpler to deal with. And that's what we're more familiar with over here. Every equation that's written with kets can also be written with bras. So we can turn all those cats into bras, and we can turn all the operators into their uh, Hermitian conjugates. And we're also, if we have uh, numerical values, we would also have to uh, conjugate those guys. So they would turn into their complex conjugates. And luckily for this guy over here, this is a real number. So it's equal to its uh, complex conjugate. So one very important thing in quantum mechanics is that observable values, observable quantities, they correspond to Hermitian operators. And Hermitian operators have that very nice property where their eigenvalues 
are real numbers. Because real numbers are what you measure in an experiment. You don't measure uh, i times some unit in an experiment. You always measure some real number. The, the real number could be positive, it could be negative, you could assign a, a, a sign to that value, but it cannot be a complex in general. It has to be on the real axis. So that is why we have that very useful property. So now let's, let's have a look at this over here. So we're taking this sandwich. If we zoom in just onto this section over here, we can see the same form that we have in the time independent Schrodinger equation, which is essentially an eigenvalue equation for the Hamiltonian operator. So let's replace this combination over here with this combination. So we're just going to have a numerical value inside the sandwich. So E sub n. That is the nth energy eigenvalue. And because this is just a numerical value, we can actually move it outside. So in general, you have to, you have to be very careful when you're commuting things in quantum mechanics, because operators in general are non-commutative. But numerical values, these real numbers, they can be moved around. So uh, you can, commutativity does work when you're multiplying by real numbers. So then we're just going to be left with this combination over here, m and n. And here we have a combination that is a bra and then a ket, or a bra ket. And that's actually where the name comes from uh, in Dirac notation. We have a bra and then a ket. And this denotes an inner product. So we're taking the inner product between these two eigenstates. What is a very important uh, property of these eigenstates? They actually form an orthonormal basis. So for this Hamiltonian operator over here, its eigenstates are orthonormal. And we have chosen them so they are normalized. So if you take the uh, inner product of an eigenstate with itself, you will just get one. That is what it means for them to be normalized. And what does it mean for them to be orthogonal? Well, these guys are all orthogonal, so if you take the inner product between any different states, they're going to be, uh, it's kind of like taking the dot product between two perpendicular vectors. It's going to be zero. So the inner product between uh, two different eigenstates is going to be zero. That is the property of orthogonality. And these guys, they, they are both normalized and they have that property of orthogonality, which means they are orthonormal. They are an orthonormal basis. So they are, they are eigenvectors or eigenstates in general, and they also have that orthonormality property. So they are or orthonormal basis. So that means we can actually write this bra, ket combination, uh, in terms of the Kronecker delta symbol. So we can write this like this over here. We can have, we're still going to have E sub n. And then this can be written as the Kronecker delta symbol. So here we have delta, and then we can write in the subscript m comma n. So this Kronecker delta symbol is a condensed notation, which uh, tells us that if these two indices are equal to each other, this turns on. It turns into a 1. So then we just have this coefficient over here. But if these guys are different, these indices are some different values, then this is going to be equal to 0. So then it's turned off. So the Kronecker delta symbol is only turned on when both of its indices are equal. For any other combination where the indices are not equal, it gets turned off. And when we say it's turned off, that is equivalent to saying it is equal to 0. So this is kind of like a piecewise function. It's 1 uh, when the indices are equal. It's 0 when they are not equal. And that is just a condensed notation. So this is just a, a Greek letter delta with a little subscript over here. And now I can actually write this in full form because I know an expression for this energy eigenvalue. That is this expression over here. So I'm going to write that as h bar omega times n plus 1 half. And we still have that Kronecker delta symbol over here, m, n. And what is this actually going to look like when we draw the matrix? Well, when you have a Kronecker delta symbol uh, as the elements, describing the elements of your matrix, you're going to have a diagonal matrix. And that is actually what we'd expect to see, because we are dealing with the energy eigenbasis. This is the energy eigenbasis. It is the basis for the Hamiltonian. And the Hamiltonian, when it's expressed in its own basis, is going to be diagonal. And what are those values on the diagonal going to be? Well, they're not just going to be ones. If this over here, if this disappeared, if we just had one over here, then we would just have the identity matrix. We would just have ones on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. But that's not what we have. What we have is all of the eigenvalues. So we will have all of the eigenvalues on the diagonal of this matrix. So I'm going to draw this matrix underneath. So this h over here can be represented. I'm going to draw this arrow. I'm not going to draw an equal sign. I'm going to draw this 
uh, two-way arrow. I'm saying, I'm saying this is the representation. It's a matrix representation of this operator in a particular basis. So it's important to specify which basis we're dealing with. These are the energy eigenstates. And these are the energy eigenvalues. So that's the basis that we're choosing to represent this matrix in. So what is going to be in the top left corner? Well, if you remember that these guys are all uh, non-negative integers, this is going to start at 0. So m and n are both going to start at 0. So we're going to have uh, our rows and our columns are all going to be indexed by 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's not going to start at 1. It's going to start at 0. And that is a very important uh, distinction. Because by convention, we are starting at 0. 0 is our first entry. So the 0, 0 position is going to be associated with 0 over here, 0 over here. And because that is equal, both m and n are 0, this is going to be 1. And over here, we're going to have 0. So I'll write this out in full. So we're going to have h bar omega times 0 plus 1 half. And because this is diagonal, the next entry is going to look like this. We're going to have h bar omega 1 plus 1 half. And then the next one is going to look like this. We're going to have h bar omega 2 plus 1 half. And I'll only write one more, because this is just going to keep on going forever. We have h bar omega 3 plus 1 half. So everywhere else, we're going to have zeros. Over here, we're going to have a zero. I have another zero here. All of this is going to be zeros. And I'll only do a small section of this matrix, because there is no upper bound. n and m can go all the way up to infinity. There is no upper bound to these guys. There is a lower bound. The lower bound is zero, right? because that is the ground state energy. So for the harmonic oscillator in quantum mechanics, it is bounded from below. The energies uh, cannot go below 0, below n equals 0. So the lowest ground state energy is actually h bar omega times 1 half. And that has a very important significance. So there is no upper bound. So this is just going to keep on going forever. I'll, keep, I'll complete these zeros. And I'll write some dots over here just to say that this is not stopping. So all of the diagonal values, those are going to be the eigenvalues. And I'll just put some brackets around this matrix so it's clear. This is the matrix representation. And what we can do is we can notice that each of the eigenvalues have a numerical coefficient on the front. And that numerical coefficient is h bar omega. So all of these guys have that same coefficient out the front. So what I can do is I can factor that coefficient outside. So I have h bar omega outside. And then on the inside, I can write this in a more condensed form. What is this going to look like on the inside? Here we're just going to have 1 half. Here we're going to have 1 plus a half, which is 3 on 2. Over here, 2 plus a half, that's 5 on 2. And then 7 on 2. It's going to be half of all of the odd numbers. So half of all the odd numbers, that's going to be inside this matrix. So first we're going to have 1 half. Then we're going to have 3 on half. Then we're going to have 5 on 2. And finally, 7 on 2. Right, because we have 3 and a half, that is 7 on 2. And I'll complete all of the zeros over here. So we're going to have all of these zeros. And just a few more zeros. And this is also going to keep on going. So I'll add some dots. The diagonal is going to keep on going. And all of these zeros are going to keep on going. And I'll put some more brackets around here. This is an equivalent way of representing the same thing. I've just factored out that numerical constant of h bar omega. And all we have left over here is half of all of the odd numbers. You can see the odd numbers appearing over here, and they're all being divided by a half. I can also factor that half outside. I can factor it out, and I can get h bar omega on 2. But I've chosen to leave it over here, because this, this unit over here, h bar omega, that is the difference between the energy levels. h bar omega on 2 is also a very important number. It is the ground state energy. So you've seen the matrix representation of the Hamiltonian operator for the quantum harmonic oscillator. That was the goal of this video. In the next few videos, we're going to be looking at the matrix representations of other uh, very interesting operators. So we're going to have a look at the position and momentum operator and the ladder operator. We're going to see how they look when we write them in terms of the energy eigenbasis. And we express them in these matrix forms. So that was the matrix representation of the Hamiltonian operator for the quantum harmonic oscillator.